Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And before you listen to this episode, I just got to let you know, I need you to stop what you're doing. Go to blkrenaissance.com, and I need you to shop for the culture. That's right. Anytime you use the promo code LLC20 at Black Renaissance Clothing's website, you will get 20% off your order. Off rip. No questions asked. So do me a favor and do it for the culture. Peace. Hey, this is KJ, and I have a question for you. When was the last time you got something nice for yourself? <laughs> That's what I thought. So why not visit www.theblurredsyndicate.com and get something that will help you express who you really are. They've got shirts, mugs, purses, mouse pads, and even aprons for the grillers of the family. So if you're a fan of anime, pro wrestling, or hell, even the Golden Girls, the Blurred Syndicate has got you covered. Also, if you use the code LLC20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order. So what are you waiting on? I got mine. Come get yours. And remember to join the BS. Hi, guys. It's Mr. I'm Just Being Honest, host of the Truth Serum Podcast, podcast for the people. You can find me on Spotify, Anchor, and Buzzsprout. More networks coming soon. Happy listening. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat, the self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Mm-hmm. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest be coming through, dropping knowledge on all that you get. A bigger the front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keep it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. Moreover, success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like boulders. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll, well, we'll be on the whole. Different vibe though. We like to ride slow and keep our windows spinning so you really can see us like Stevie Wonder waking up with his eyes closed. Yeah, got the kind of flow that rocked the boat. On my 16s of pounds of dough. And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic, then grab some rope. Matter of fact, better grab some hope while you at it. We keep it live, it's time to tune in. Turn up the sound on what you're using. It goes so hard, I think it's bruising. The show is 2020, no need to zoom in. Yeah. Hey yo, what's up? It's your boy Sir, and I'm back again with another part of the McMahon allegation, which is Janelle Grant's uh, court action against WWE, Vince McMahon, and John Laurinaitis. Last we left off, we discussed how uh, Janelle had been injured due to the roughness and abuse of the sexual activity she had been engaging uh, with Mr. McMahon and his various threesomes, how Mr. McMahon had been sharing her nude videos and pictures with people she don't know. And she, we're just getting into when she... Finally, which is part H, she finally uh, gets recruited by uh, John Laurinaitis. And um, Laurinaitis is a really close uh, friend and confidant to Vince McMahon. Um, Now, just to kind of catch you up on another part, um, she no longer was in the legal department as an administrator, coordinator, whatever the fuck they called her. Um, She's now uh, working with the XFL as a coordinator and she she lobbied to um stay there because she didn't want to go back but her request was denied so we're going to pick back up with h and uh, i apologize for this being late it's just work was work and you know how i go my adults and i appreciate y'all supporting me by listening to these um just let me know if you have any questions any thoughts or any talking points you want to uh, know my perspective on but let's get into it McMahon recruits Laurinaitis into his exploitation of Ms. Grant and transfer her into Laurinaitis' department at WWE, trafficking and sex acts at WWE headquarters. During this time, Ms. Grant became so sick from the stress and situations that McMahon had subjected her to that her weight plummeted to over 100 pounds. Dang, so she lost a lot of weight. I don't know if you guys seen the pictures, um, but she, she that's that's substantial, like... Think about 100 pounds, that's skin and bones, cuz, which McMahon ignored. 
One distressing event occurred on November 21st, 2020, when McMahon drove uh, Miss Grant to headquarters to fulfill his fantasy of having a sexual encounter with her in his office, causing Miss Grant to suffer a panic attack in the passenger seat while pleading with McMahon to change his mind and drive her back home. McMahon scoffed and then gave her an ultimatum, either have the sexual encounter or his office or inside the parked car. Terrified, Ms. Grant obeyed McMahon's directions and they entered WWE headquarters for the encounter. Further, despite Ms. Grant's repeated statements that she did not consent to threesomes with McMahon and the physical therapist, McMahon advertised her to others and told her that uh, he had found another person to join them, John Laurinaitis. Goddamn. Now, you may have, if you watch WWE, you've seen John Laurinaitis before. He played as GM on the Raw, I believe. In November 2020, McMahon pressed Miss Grant to make explicit photos and videos to send to Laurinaitis. McMahon orchestrated exchanges by instructing Miss Grant when to create explicit content for Laurinaitis, including what to say, and provided her with notes to adjust her performance. McMahon then facilitated the exchange of explicit content back and forth between Miss Grant and Laurinaitis. Notably, even once phone numbers were exchanged between Ms. Grant and Laurinaitis, McMahon insisted that they, he be privy to any messages that Ms. Grant sent to Laurinaitis and demand that she report back all interactions, further illustrating the level of control he had over Ms. Grant. He was her pimp. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. On or about December 29, 2020, a threesome was arranged between McMahon, Laurinaitis, and Ms. Grant at McMahon's condo. McMahon instructed her to tell Laurinaitis that she was a neighbor and girlfriend working in the legal field, but not at WWE. Shortly after meeting Laurinaitis, Ms. Grant asked him, asked if him if she was the first woman whom McMahon had introduced him to in such a setting. Laurinaitis failed to respond and shot a look directly at McMahon, who quickly intervened by kissing Ms. Grant and initiating the sexual encounter amongst the three. Once again, Ms. Grant asked for protection. Once again, her request was denied after an assurance that Laurinaitis was clean. In the days that followed, McMahon texted her that Laurinaitis hugged me like a bear and said thank you to me already 12 times. In contrast, Laurinaitis messaged Ms. Grant, thanks for the fun afternoon. On or around January 21st, uh, excuse me, 25th, 2021, Ms. Grant was reassigned to directly support WWE's new hire, a, a new high-ranking employee in the legal department. On February 5th, 2001, Ms. McMahon, McMahon sent Ms. Grant to establish a schedule for when other men, including the physical therapist and Laurinaitis, could have sex with Ms. Grant, which Ms. Grant attempted to rebuff. We are about to read the text message. Not safe for work. Please adjust your volume if you need. Exactly. Baby, he's not the only one. Blank called me this afternoon begging to eat you and fuck you with his nice and hard dick. Give me another week, baby, and I'll be ready. I'm feeling more like myself. It's not great, but it's getting better. Tell him soon. I already told him, baby. By the way, Johnny wants Tuesdays, but not this coming one and the occasional Saturday, but maybe I can shift it to Thursday nights. Johnny would like all of the above. Texts like this. A shift schedule caused Miss Grant to suffer breakdowns over how her original hope for a new life had been reduced to an objectified and de dehuman not wow dehumanized existence with no way out. On or about March 6, 2021, a second threesome between McMahon, Laurinaitis, and Miss Grant occurred. On March 21. WWE still had not hired replacement after WWE corporate officer number four's termination in 2020. I don't know if y'all remember, they were talking about furloughed jobs, and while they got fired, she was still kept. On March 2021, McMahon informed Ms. Grant, still an entry-level coordinator, that top execs in the company knew about their relationship and that her presence in the legal department was effectively delaying the company's efforts to hire a new replacement for this high-ranking official reinforcing the fact that many within the company were well aware of the circumstances detailed herein. As a result, McMahon stated that the plans was for her to change departments and he verbally directed Ms. Grant to transfer to Talent Relations Department, reporting to Laurinaitis. 
On March 10, 21, Ms. Grant Sick McMahon in Texas recapping her conversation and expressing shock and range of concerns, including about Laurenitis. Essentially, Ms. Grant expressed a desire to be treated humanely and taken seriously, which he acknowledged could be an uphill battle. That's crazy. Being treated humanely and seriously could be an uphill battle. Unfortunately, Ms. Grant's transfer to talent relations uh, departure came with the expectation from both McMahon and Laurenitis that she engaged with Laurenitis sexually, both physically and with explicit content. On March 2021, WWE Corporate Officer Number 2 informed Grant that day that she would be officially moved to Talent Relations and would quickly begin reporting to Lauren Itis, although details about her role, including the salary and title, were still being firmed up. In essence, Ms. Grant again found herself in a completely undefined role, except for the understanding that she remained a sex slave to be used and trafficked by McMahon within WWE. On March 12, 2021, McMahon reminded her of a connection between her job and her role as a sex object. Let's work hard and play hard, too. On March 16, 2021, Ms. Grant was directed to pick up a key to Lauren Knight's hotel and serve, himself to, serve herself to him as breakfast before the start of work. McMahon constantly reinforced the expectation that Ms. Grant sexually performed for him and her new boss, Lauren Knight, is both in and out the office. McMahon wrote in 2021, do you promise to make me proud, baby? Will you show him what a porn star you can be? Will you show off for me like never before? And on days when he's in town, I want him to fuck you every morning and later in the office, too. McMahon indicated on April 2nd, 2021, that Miss Grant should obey if Lauren Nidus wanted him to bring yet m more men in. Whoa. All right. Another text message. Not safe for work. Control your volume. Maybe he wants other two other guys to join you with him. Holy shit. You told him you would do anything with him, so if he surprised you with two others, you would have no alternative than to take them on. Oh my god, the stories you could tell them tell me then. It makes me want to come right now. By the way, I just thought of what I think is an excellent idea maybe you can hint at that if he knows someone who can be discreet it might be better if you and johnny try him out first so he can be more comfortable before he's introduced to me actually that makes total sense doesn't it wow in april 2021 wwe senior vice president of human resources was fired noted the same month McMahon on um, excuse me, McMahon informed Ms. Grant that she would be given the title of Vice President Operations within the Talent Relations Department. However, days later, McMahon backtracked and said that she would be director of operations instead to avoid suspicion of a sudden promotion to vice president. During the conversation, McMahon told Ms. Grant that he had expressed to her WWE management that he wanted her to reach the level of vice president and spend a year or two in that position, and she would be able to take the experience anywhere. Ms. Grant left this conversation with McMahon hoping that she could escape this situation with her finances and reputation intact. She just needed to survive up to that point. In April 2021, meeting between Ms. Grant and WWE Corporate Officer Number 2. I'm just going to say Officer Number 2 and Number 3 and all that because saying all that has been much. Uh, Officer Number 2 acknowledged that the jump initially proposed to Vice President was way too big and could put a target on Ms. Grant's back. Nevertheless, Corporate Officer Number 2 presented Ms. Grant with paperwork detailing a base salary increase to 200000 as Director of Operations. As soon as Ms. Grant began working directly for Lauren Nidus, forcibly touching and overtly sexual behaviors as part of daily life while he was in the office. On numerous occasions, Ms. Grant was uh, directed to visit Lauren Nidus at his hotel room before work to serve herself as breakfast. These devastating experiences made Ms. Grant feel as though she was being pimped out huh, as an object for sexual gratification for her new boss. Upon information, excuse me, upon information and belief, corporate funds from the WWE were being used to finance Laurenitis' hotel stays when these co-work sexual encounters occurred. Per McMahon's instructions, Ms. Grant reported interactions with Laurenitis back to McMahon, for whom the story served as a source of arousal. He's a cuck. The arrangement 
with Laurinaitis left Miss Grant miserable and enraged. However, in her years of experience with McMahon, she knew that her request to stop would be ignored at best or used to destroy her career or reputation at best or at worst, excuse me. Miss Grant was left feeling isolated by colleagues and surveilled by top level employees within WWE. Professionally and personally, Ms. Grant's fate was entirely in the hands of McMahon, Laurinaitis, and the WWE executives who enabled her abuse. On March 4th, excuse me, May 24th, 2021, McMahon messaged Ms. Grant to remind her that a mistake could destroy her career and that she should pursue verbal communication rather than written where possible. Oh, shit. Another text message, guys. Remember, control your volume, not safe for work. Those compliments will keep on coming, baby. Just wait and see. I totally understand and agree. Uh, being scared of communication and photos, Johnny gets drunk and sloppy, sloppy and could easily make a mistake that could cost him his job and yours too. Verbal communication is the way to go. That said, have you and Johnny talked about breakfast tomorrow? Uh, we haven't discussed it at all. It's up in the air. Johnny complained about getting a new phone and it just arrived. I haven't set up time to coordinate setting it up with IT because I need him to assure me that it has everything erased that he's ever saved. Truly, I regret that he ever got pics. It's not worth stressing. I'm not worth the stressing I'm feeling. I'm done with it. Panic that someone else's mistake could cost Miss Grant her livelihood left her feeling hopeless and afraid of what would happen if McMahon moves shifted, leading her to message him expressions of loyalty, love, and submission as a coping mechanism and with hopes that he would protect her. On June 14th, 2021, Ms. Grant again told McMahon that she did not want to engage in sexual encounters with Lauren Itis, adding that I left that hotel feeling bad about myself every time. McMahon responded that the one-on-one -on -one encounters could cease, but that he expected threesomes with Lauren Itis to continue. So he like, we can stop fucking. But y'all got to keep fucking. I wonder if Laurenitis has dirt on him. L, excuse me, I. McMahon and Laurenitis confined Ms. Grant in an office for an abusive sexual assault at WWE headquarters. I'm just going to say uh, trigger warning, guys. This is about to get worse. The following morning on June 15, 2021, at approximately 7.51 a.m., Ms. Grant messaged McMahon that due to her work on an important project, she did not want a threesome that week at, as a threesome won't set me up for success, it'll knock me out. To avoid pushback from McMahon, Ms. Grant offered the following week instead. McMahon and Laura Ignitis ignored her plea and brought her into Laura Ignitis' office, forcibly touching and undressing her before forcing her to engage into a threesome on the conference table. Ms. Grant pleaded, no, 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 please stop. McMahon responded with, no means yes. Ms. Grant again told them to stop. Instead, McMahon licked his fingers and penetrated Ms. Grant and said, take it, bitch. With each taking turns restraining her for the other, Lauren Nidus then joined by forcibly shoving his tongue, then penis, into Ms. Grant's mouth. On June 23, 2021, around 11.42 a.m., McMahon directed Ms. Grant in the middle of a workday to meet him over on a lower floor. When Ms. Grant arrived, McMahon led her inside his private locker room, locked the door, and forced himself on her on a, over a massage table. Later that day, $15,000 in gift cards to Bloomingdale's was purchased at McMahon's discretion and delivered by McMahon's personal assistant to Ms. Grant in her office. <sighs> On multiple other occasions, while Ms. Grant worked under Laurinaitis, including after McMahon's promise that one-on-one -on -one encounters would end, even after his wife moved across the country to join Laurinaitis, he would call Ms. Grant to his office, lock the door, unzip his pants, and instruct Ms. Grant to perform oral sex. Through all this, Ms. Grant noticed that less... The let that uh, excuse me, let me start over. Through all this, Miss Grant noticed that the less she sexually engaged with Laurenitis, the less work she had as Laurenitis began to belittle Miss Grant in front of colleagues. Fearing for herself and her future, Miss Grant asked Laurenitis whether whether he still supported her. I'm sorry, that was part of a longer sentence. Let me read that again. Miss Grant asked Laurenitis whether he still supported her promotion to vice president. 
He deflected with an answer about considering all options and changed the subject. The extreme uncertainty and fear for her future exacerbated Miss Grant's physical symptoms of illness, including gastrointestinal issues and vomiting, which continued to worsen over the remainder of her time at WWE. J. McMahon uses Miss Grant's as a sexual pawn to entice world famous wrestling talent and keep WWE stars under contract with WWE. WWE Superstar is famous worldwide as a top talent with WWE with a large collective fan base that helps generate viewership and drives in-person attendance, all of which enrich WWE and McMahon. Upon information and belief, McMahon began to recruit WWE Superstar for a sexual encounter with Ms. Grant while, he was still a, while she was a still a coordinator in the legal department. By July of 21, McMahon informed Ms. Grant that the WWE Superstar would be their next playmate. As in other instances, McMahon described his fantasy of seeing Ms. Grant engaged in unmerciful sexual acts with the WWE Superstar during which he would rip her open. McMahon also excuse me, confided to Ms. Grant that he wanted to have the WWE Superstar under a new contract while the WWE Superstar indicated an interest in a return to other professional endeavors. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm just going to say it. I know these are allegations, but this is Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar uh, had expressed that he wanted to return to MMA. And I'm, I'm like 85% sure they're referring to Brock Lesnar. I hate to say that, but yeah. On or about July 12th, and I'm going to say allegedly, allegedly, I'm sorry. On or about June, July 12th, 2021, McMahon directed Miss Grant to create personalized sexual content for the WWE Superstar. McMahon shared the photos with the WWE Superstar and then informed Miss Grant that he likes what he sees. On July 21st, 2021, McMahon flew slash and or caused the WWE Superstar to fly on a jet into a local airport and travel into Connecticut across state lines for what McMahon described as a, a business dinner, as well as a sexual encounter with Ms. Grant. Upon information and belief, the dinner was to discuss the Superstar's continued involvement in the WWE. Prior to the business dinner with McMahon, WWE Superstar made a brief visit to Ms. Grant's building. However, the WWE Superstar did not return to the building for a sexual encounter because he was too intoxicated to be taken back to the plane. And too intoxicated and taken back to the plane. Sorry. Later that evening, after McMahon recounted the story uh, about his dinner with the WWE Superstar to Ms. Grant, she sought to salvage the night with the request that they role play. He sought, I'm sorry. Request that they role play a sexual encounter in which McMahon acted as if he was a superstar. McMahon was so physically rough that Ms. Grant, during the encounter, that Ms. Grant begged McMahon to stop numerous times, including loud cries of help, I'm serious, I'm scared, and he, among other things, penetrated her, fisted her, pulled her hair, pinned her, shoved her, and open palms slapped her. McMahon's assault caused Ms. Grant to break down, weeping, and curl into a fetal position in her arms, with her arms pulled up to protect her face. McMahon alternated between slaps and shoves before admitting that I'm really fucking you, I'm really fucking up with you right and left tonight, huh? God damn. McMahon forbade Miss Grant from leaving his condo that night unless she could verbally assure him that there wasn't a problem and everything was okay. Notably, however, he made no effort to check on her well-being after leaving his condo. On August 26, 2021, WWE held its second biggest annual event, SummerSlam, in Las Vegas. Around this time, McMahon and the Superstar privately reached an informal agreement about his return. That night, McMahon texts Miss Grant as a reminder she was an enslaved uh, object to him. I want to drive you lower and lower, so low that you might beg me to sell you. Emphasis added. That's fucking crazy. McMahon continued to advertise a sexual encounter to the superstar during the formal negotiation of the booking contract with WWE. <sighs> Another text message, guys. You know what to do. Here's what Blank said after I told him that part of the deal was fucking you. LOL, that's your turf. She will be ruined after me and leave your ass. Plus, after me, your tool won't fit anymore. 
In December 21, McMahon gave Miss Grant's personal cell number to the superstar and promised she'll do anything requested of her. In the days that followed, the superstar revealed a fetish to Miss Grant and tested McMahon's promise that Miss Grant would do anything with the request that she send a ver video of herself urinating. Unable to recognize herself, Miss Grant went numb and obeyed. WWE superstar informed Miss Grant that if she had not complied with the request, the WWE superstar would have lost any interest in her and then called her a bitch. The same month, superstar expressed to Miss Grant his desire to set up a play date and have a sexual encounter. However, a snowstorm changed the superstar's travel plans, and Miss Grant ultimately used the weather and the COVID-19 as an excuse to back out. K. McMahon tells Miss Grant that his wife has learned about her and pressures Miss Grant for an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. So I'm, we're gonna stop right here for right now for this part. I know we're getting to the good part. I know it. I know it. And that sounds horrible to say, but the details of what Linda was thinking—that's what I want to know. When how everything just culminated into it getting out and blowing up. That's what I'm referring to. But I don't know, man. This this is terrible. So I appreciate y'all tuning in for this. Uh, we're on page 41. Uh, we're going to be moving to page. I think we can do my two more parts and we'll be done. But let me know in the comment section, man, what y'all think about this. This is this is nuts. This is. I'm shocked, bro. Somebody finna go to jail. But anyway, that's it's been your boy, sir. And uh. I have another episode out for you guys tomorrow, maybe even tonight. Can we put your business out in the streets? People be nosy anyway. So if you're interested in promoting your business, brand, platform, or whatever it is that you want people to know about, hit us up. Or if you're interested in just sponsoring an episode or two of the Underground Queens podcast, feel free to email us at the Underground Queens with a Z podcast at gmail.com. Again, that's the Underground Queens podcast at gmail.com. Or DM us on Instagram at the Underground Queens. Or you can even hit us up on Facebook at Underground Queens. We look forward to working with you and helping putting your business out in the streets.